Hello everyone. Welcome to the last assignment of the course. This assignment is going to be in module format so you don't spend too much time on it. But I promised you day one that we would do this, this thing. So we're circling all the way back to the beginning of the course where on the first day we did this icebreaker with the rush hour problem. So this is the problem where you've got a bunch of cars that are either horizontal or vertical. They take up the number of cells in a grid and your goal is to get this red car to the exit by moving the other cars out of the way. So vertical cars can only move vertically, horizontal cars can only move horizontally. Um, so in this case, well, this yellow car is blocking the way. Um, the only way it can move the yellow car is down, but actually can't move it down far enough until it hits the orange car, so I gotta get the orange car out of the way. Well, in order to do that, I gotta get the green car out of the way, so let me start there. Move the orange car, yellow car, and now I'm free to go, okay. So that puzzle was considered easy. Um, here's a harder one. And somebody on the first day came up with a solution that took 24 steps. So we'll see if we can match that solution. All right, now, so how are we gonna do that? How are we gonna have the computer solve this problem um, and come up with an optimal solution? Well, it turns out a very nice way to represent this problem is as a graph. So we're gonna, we're gonna bring our skills from unit six into this problem. So how is this a graph? I mean, I guess I could think like, well, each one of these cells is a node and the edges are connecting. But actually, we're gonna, we're gonna go a little more abstract. This is kind of neat. I mean, a lot of the examples of graphs that I've given you so far have the nodes in the plane. Um, but actually, we're gonna think a little more abstractly here as a node in the graph as a configuration of all the cars. So this here is one node. As soon as I move a car, that's another node, okay? So, and then there's an edge between nodes. If I can reach, if I can move a single car um, and get to, so a single car by a single space and get to the other node. So, so a single move from one node to the next means that there's an edge between them. Okay, so this is a little, maybe a little tough to, to visualize at first. So I made an app to help with this. So what this is doing, this is showing a bunch of the states um, of, the, of the board. And again, each one is a node. So I'm drawing them as images here. So this is for that, that hard problem we were just looking at. Um, the color's a little bit different, but let me just verify here. Yeah, so we start off, yeah, that one's blocking and then that one's below like that. Okay, so we're, we're trying to get the red car over to the exit there. Um, and so again, yeah, there's an edge between two nodes if I can, can make a single move um, and reach the other node. So we see this graph has some very rich structure. You can see this like, almost looks like a you know, building, like a vertical stack of cubes here. Um, let's just look at the top cube. So you see that um, in this edge, this blue car remains okay so actually in this in this top quadrilateral here in the graph um the only things that are moving are um the pink car and this this blue car here so in this top edge the blue car remains fixed the pink car moves uh yeah the blue, the blue car remains fixed in this position the bottom edge the blue car remains fixed in this position on the left edge, the pink car remains in this position, and the right edge, the pink car goes up. So, you, so you've got four possibilities moving um, the blue car between two positions and the pink car between two positions. Um, and we should see a similar thing on this bottom square here. So in this one, it looks like we are also moving the blue car and the pink car, but, but to different um, locations. Okay, so they overlap. Um, but anyway, okay, so, so that's cool. Uh, but here's the really amazing thing. So when you build this entire graph, um, you can zoom out and you can really see the whole, so, the whole solution space um, or this, the whole state space rather. Um, and and how we, now we can start to think, well, how can I follow a path from where I start um, eventually getting to the goal, 
So if I look at this other side of the graph here, what I see is this node here is the solution. So now what I've done is I've changed my mind frame of, okay, you know, thinking this grid, how do I make moves? What do I do? To a problem of graph search or graph traversal. And we know how to do that. We just spent a whole unit talking about that. So what it's really going to be is, is just, you know, traversing this graph and finding, so let me zoom all the way out. Whoops, that's as much as let me zoom. Um, starting here and trying to find a path, a shortest path to the solution in. Okay. Now, what makes this a little more challenging than some of the other graph problems that we've seen is that we don't have all the states up front. We don't have all the nodes at the beginning. We just start with a node um, and we have to generate new nodes on the fly. Uh, we, we don't necessarily know what all the possible configurations that you can reach um, from the starting state here are at the beginning. So that makes it a little challenging, but not that much more challenging. Um, so, so I'm going to have you piece together methods to create new nodes and edges and things like that. Okay, let's look at some of the code that we can use to implement this sort of framework in Python. So one of the things we're going to need is, is a car. Let's encapsulate what it means to be a car in this game. So a car is just a sequence of, of squares connected to each other in a block. It's got a row that it starts at, a column that it starts at, it's got a length, and it's either horizontally or vertically oriented. So that's all in this one object here. Um, if this variable is true, it means it's horizontal. If it's false, it means it's vertical. Okay, but then um, we actually have to piece together all this information into a state, which is a bunch of cars. Um, and we also store a lot. So we got an array of cars here. We have the size of the grid. So this is um, our cars are on an n by n grid. Uh, this is the state that we need to reach. Um, that our red car needs to reach. And actually in our list of cars, the convention is um, the first car is the red car. So remember that. This will be used later when we backtrace. So if we found a solution, we'll, we'll maintain pointers um, to previous states that we can use to, to find a sequence of, of moves. Okay. All right, so, so that's what a state is. So a state is a bunch of cars and it's a little bit more information about what makes up this puzzle. Okay, I also have a clone method. This is gonna come in handy a little later. What this does is make a so-called deep copy. So it's not just a, a pointer reassignment that actually creates a whole new object that can then be modified independently of this one. That, that's a copy. So that's a good way to you know, start at a particular node and, and then branch out. So I'll clone this and then I'll just move one of the cars. So that's the way we'll generate new nodes. Um, I've got a method to load in a puzzle from a text file. I won't go into detail on this, but it's, but it's fairly standard. Um, the text files are specified like this. So this gives the, um, the size of the grid. This is the goal node. And then these are all the cars. And again, the first one is the one that I'm trying to move to the goal state. So, it's, so here it starts on row two column Zero, it's a horizontal car of length two, and I'm supposed to move it to, it's gotta stay in the same row, but it needs to end up at column five here. Okay. Um, great, so, so that's a puzzle. It gets loaded in from a text file. Um, I also created a helper method to convert all the information about the state of the puzzle, where all the cars are, into a two-dimensional list. So, and, and what, I'll, what I've done, let me actually print the list real quick. Um, so I'll skip this stuff. I'll get back to it in a moment. But, but here's what the grid looks like. Um, so if I look at, so this is a representation of, of this problem here, actually the easy problem. Let me make sure I'm at the beginning here. Yeah. Um, so I can see, okay, zero, zero. That, that's, that's the red car, like I said, that's, that's in this spot here. Um, the yellow car, one, one, one. Um, the green car that is a 2 2 there. Orange car is, is my 3 3. And then the, the purple car is 4 4. And everything that is not covered by a car is a negative one. So this is one way that I can represent my state here. Okay, so that 
is what this method does. It just loops through the list of cars and it fills in that two-dimensional array. So nothing too crazy here. You know, it just loops through the cars and then for however many cells each car takes up, it has to, to loop through that and um, occupy each one of those cells, okay. But all the cars here are either two or three, so that loop inner loop will only go up to three times. Of course, you know, you can make puzzles as big as you want, but so this code is flexible. Um, this is a method that, that draws these pictures using that plot loop. Uh, make sure that all the cars have a different color and that the first car is always red and that the background, things that aren't taken up are, are white. Um, and then also, you know, th this here was, was a nice representation where I did some, some formatting, did line breaks and spacing in between. Um, so that's what this state printable does. State hashable, um, that doesn't do any of the formatting, but it returns a string that, that uniquely identifies this state. So these, this will be useful when we do things like breath for, breath for search to check to make sure we haven't visited a particular state before. So we'll look up the state by its string. That's almost like it's hash code. Um, we've got a method to say whether this is a winning state, whether our goal car actually happens to overlap with the, the goal location. So again, that's, that's, the, um, that's the card index zero. And now here's what you gotta fill in um, to start with. So we're just starting with the first state in the puzzle. Um, and from here, we actually have to branch out and generate other states. So from this state, you know, there's a few things I could do. I can move this red card to the right, or I can move this yellow card down, or I can move this green card up. So there are three possibilities of things that I can do here. And I need to generate those three possibilities and, and make them new states. So I've started this method for you to, to, to figure out all the possible states. Um, and I've actually filled in the slightly more difficult part here, which is if the car moves down, if it's vertically oriented or to the right, if it's horizontally oriented. And the reason this one's a little more difficult is because um, we have to make sure there's space for that. So this yellow car, for example, let me move some space. So it starts off in row zero, column three. I can move it down to row one, column three. So we've got to stay in column three. Um, row one, column three, row two, column three, row three, column three. And actually here I run out of space. Okay. Um, so this code checks, actually make sure that um, that the length of the car doesn't bring you out of bounds or into collision with another car. Okay. Um, I want you to add the part that, that checks if I can move this particular car um, to the left or up, and that's a little bit easier. So if I, if I look here, um, for example, I can move, so this, this orange car is at row index five, column index one. I can move it to row index five column index zero, and I, I, but then I see I can't move it to column index negative one. It doesn't matter how long the car is if I'm moving it left. Um, its first index is the one that I designate as its index. So I don't have to check the length of the car. I just need to look and say, is its position, is its row and column ij um, within bounds or not? And a similar thing for cars moving moving in the vertical direction, or, or not colliding with another car. That's that's really what we're checking. So we're just making sure that um, that the grid actually is empty there, and, and that it's within bounds. So so you'll do a similar thing. So for example, th this car here, I, I can move it vertically. Um, so that would be subtracting from a row. I could try to do that, but then I would find that there was something there. So that's what you've got to code up first. Okay, so we'll generate the neighbor. Then we'll talk about how to, how to build the graph and, and find solutions. So generate the neighbors first and we'll keep going.